When we were last together, um, we talked a little bit about moving the Indians to the reservation, which is located here in South Dakota. Not the most beautiful land in the world. The process by which they moved these Western Indians was called the Fort Laramie Treaty. And because of the pressure, the killing of the buffalo, the uh, troops, it was signed by most Indian tribes, including Red Cloud. Remember, he was the first to declare war on the United States. And uh, these chiefs agreed to move to the reservation in the Dakotas. In the, in the treaty, they were promised the Black Hills forever. This is a picture showing the signing. Uh, you can see a lot of dignitaries sitting in, uh, up and the Indians sitting on the ground. They had a senator. They had the territorial governor. And uh, this was a very solemn occasion. You had a little uh, Ed puzzle, which I hope most of you did, on uh, this man, General George Armstrong Custer. Uh, he, of course, uh, this is a little review. They, uh, he had curly blonde hair, and he actually is the only one out of all of his men, for some reason, the Indians did not scalp or mutilate his body after the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Remember, he had great ambitions. He thought he could be president of the United States and needed to make a reputation. So went out west and uh, led his cavalry into uh, a trap. This is where it took place. He basically... Uh, thought he was chasing smaller groups of Indians. In the meantime, Sitting Bull and, Cus and uh, Crazy Horse had consolidated, and there were thousands of Indians banded together that were resisting going into the go going to the reservations. Uh, Custer led his Ninth Cavalry into uh, an area on the Little Bighorn River. And that is why this is called the Battle of the Little Bighorn or Custer's Last Stand. This is a, uh, it's actually a painting. Obviously, we didn't have photography back there on the battlefield, but it uh, shows Custer here in the middle, and uh, basically they are surrounded. And when they are surrounded, it Battle is not a very long battle, and all of Custer's men are killed. So they call it Custer's Last Stand. Over 268 die. Um, I'm sorry, it was the Seventh Cavalry. I think I said the Ninth. Indians are led by Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull, and they celebrate. Uh, Sitting Bull had actually gone into the sweat lodge before. He had seen visions of this great, great Indian. Victory, remember, City Bull is a medicine man. But the problem is, it was a great Indian victory. But President Ulysses S. Grant gets word of this on July 4th, 1876. So right in the midst of this great celebration of the 100-year anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, Grant gets word of the 7th Cavalry being not only killed, but mutilated. So he is, of course, incensed. He is a, a general, and he mobilizes his armies and sends more and more troops to the West, and basically they are going to track down the Indians and force them to the reservation. So uh, although a great battle, it actually kind of backfires. Last Indian chief we're going to talk about is Chief Joseph. Chief Joseph was a leader in Washington State, uh, Walla Walla, Washington, and his tribe was called the Nez Pierce. He did not want to move his people to the reservation. He actually uh, had been christened a Christian. His parents had been converted, and uh, now, you know, they, he, he felt like his people were being treated badly. So what he wanted to do was take his people into Canada, escape into Canada, join Sitting Bull, who had also escaped into Canada. And he's moving his people, and a horrible winter storm ensues. He's pursued by the cavalry. He almost makes it, but because of the weather, and because he's got old people and children and uh, women with him, he is forced to surrender. 
This is his famous speech. I am tired of fighting. Our chiefs are killed. Looking glass is dead. The old men are dead. It is cold and we have no blankets. The little children are freezing to death. Hearing my chiefs, I am tired. My heart is sad and sick. So this is the famous quote that you'll probably see on a test. From where the sun now stands, from this day forward, I will fight no more forever. This is a huge painting that is actually at the uh, uh, Art Museum in Washington, D.C., and it's showing the horrible conditions as Chief Joseph is forced to surrender, and they are going to move him to the reservation. He speaks beautiful English, uh, he writes well, and he is actually going to be a spokesman for the Indians and their um, problems that they have with the corrupt Indian agents on the reservation. And Chief Joseph is going to live a very, very long life, um, along with, with Red Cloud. Red Cloud is also on the reservation. Ultimately, Sitting Bull will join them as well. The final battle, and it's not much of a battle, uh, ensues on the reservation land. Sitting Bull has returned. Um, he's actually spent some time with Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, and he travels around the world. He said the only two white people he trusted were Buffalo Bill and Andy Oakley. And he comes back to the reservation, and of course he is revered as a, a famous warrior. A crazy Horse at this point has been forced to surrender, and as he's in a fort uh, with his hands tied, he is stabbed in the back and murdered. So Sitting Bull, he is kind of looked on as the spiritual leader as well as, as a great warrior. And he encourages this religious dance called the Ghost Dance. They say that if they dance right, that the buffalo will return, that their lands will be returned to them, and that all these settlers that have come upon them will leave and, and the land will be theirs again. So the Battle of Wounded Knee, they come to Sitting Bull's home. They're going to round him up because he's he's been encouraging this ghost dance, and as they're coming to arrest him, he is shot and he is killed. The people are gathered at Wounded Knee Creek, just outside the reservation, and the 7th Cavalry, remember that was Custer's uh, group, they surround this encampment and they send soldiers down to gather up the, the weapons. A shot goes out and before you know it, there is a massacre and over 300 Sioux are killed. 130 of them are women, old men, small children and it is a horrific massacre. They call this revenge for the Little Bighorn. But this is the last major skirmish, and after the Battle of Wounded Knee, uh, this is pretty much the end of the resistance by the Indian. These are pictures actually taken at Wounded Knee. Uh, photography had been developed, actually, of uh, Civil War, 1860s, and this is, this is occurring in the uh, 1880s, so it's easy to uh, take battlefield pictures because the people aren't moving. This person was actually frozen the, uh, after, the, after the massacre. A horrible snowstorm came in and below zero temperatures, and anybody who was still wounded was just left on the field. So uh, the bodies, when they finally got to them, were frozen. These are more pictures showing what the battlefield looked like. And of course, they could not dig individual graves in the frozen ground, so they dug a huge pit and threw the bodies in, and sadly, some of the soldiers took uh, souvenirs from the Indians as they buried them. So a guy named Senator Dawes comes up with an idea to um, assimilate the Indians in so that we, they would be more like Americans. And what you needed, he figured you needed to do was take them away from their tribal groups and give them each 
160 acres, much like the Homestead Act that we're going to be talking about that you've already read about, and separate them into these family groups on farmland and make them into farmers. And then they would be granted citizenship after 25 years. So you might have heard the uh, Lincoln speech, a house divided cannot stand, basically separate them from their tribal groups and get them into these family units. So this is Dawes Act. The um, Indians, did, it, it was a disaster um, of 138 million acres. Uh, Indians were cheated out of the vast majority of it. Uh, they either, even if they had um, decent land to farm, they couldn't get their crops to market. It was a disaster. Uh, the Khan, you know, Indians were a communal group. They did not believe in land ownership. They, they did things together. And of course, the government wanted to break up those strong ties. They wanted to assimilate the Indians into our culture. So know that word assimilation, and basically it's if you go to a country, you speak that language, you adopt their culture, they, you adopt their customs, you wear their types of clothes. So know the term assimilation. One of the other ways that they used to assimilate was to take children away. And we're going to be doing an ed puzzle that will... Uh, talk about that assimilation. So one of the schools, one of the 25 across the country, was called the Carlisle Indian School. They would take children from their homes and they would basically not allow them to speak their native language. They had to speak English. They would learn a trade. They would cut their hair. They would dress them. And then hopefully the assimilation would take and they would go off into society and become good Americans. So this is a before picture of some of the children that they took. And that is the after picture. So you can see hair has been cut. Uh, they have been groomed to look like good American citizens. I love the way they've tucked their hands into their coats up on the top. So that is kind of the end of the uh, Native American culture being free. This is another picture of Sitting Bull. He says, this is a quote, whatever you have wanted of me, I have obeyed. Of course, that's not quite true in the case of Sitting Bull, but that is the story.